Hello, my name is Steve Karen. Welcome to my channel. Uh, this video is something that probably needed to be done a long time ago. It's going to give you an overview of what's in my Raspberry Shakes live stream. Um, it's going to be pretty high level, but I'll have links to uh, details down below if you want to dive into any of the topics a little deeper or just leave questions in the comments and I'll try to get back to them as soon as I can. First of all, what is a Raspberry Shake? Well, a Raspberry Shake is a personal professional grade Spicelograph. It uses the Raspberry Pi computer, hence the name Raspberry Shake. They're small, compact, and pretty easy to use. They're pretty much plug and play. They come in several models, and most people put them in garage floors, basements. Ideally, you want to put them anywhere where there's uh, not much foot traffic or car traffic. Now, I took that a little step further and ended up burying mine in the, in the backyard. Uh, maybe I'll make a video on, on the vault itself. We can see some of the images here. And again, there's more details uh, in the links. Where is the backyard my Raspberry Shake is buried in? Well, it's in Chino Hills, California. And here you can see uh, where it's located uh, in Southern California relative to the major faults in the area. So now that we have a little bit of background on what a shake is and, and where mine is at, I'd like to go through and start describing the elements of the stream. Starting with a date and title, the time listed is a Pacific time. The camera view is a relatively recent addition. Uh, if you're looking in the direction of the camera, the seismograph would be behind and slightly to the right, about 100 feet or so. Uh, the camera is most useful for checking uh, traffic driving by. Traffic is the, the main cause of noise that you'll see on the seismograph. The Quake List pulls USGS data for recent California and Nevada earthquakes. I've made the addition of showing the distance and relative direction from Chino Hills. The Raspberry Shake Station view map shows all the Raspberry Shake stations in Southern California. Each station is represented by a triangle. The triangles will change color based on the amount of motion detected at each station, ranging from a deep red for the most motion to the deep blue for the least amount of motion. Now one thing to note is that any individual station turning a deep red doesn't necessarily mean an earthquake is occurring. In fact, you'll notice that most of them in the LA area are a red most of the time. I'm not exactly sure why this is, but apparently they must be located in some type of noisy environment, whether uh, located near machinery or maybe traffic going by. The thing to watch for um, when an earthquake is, is present is a group of stations changing color. Um, often you'll see it from uh, north to south or east to west type of progression of color as the earthquake makes its way through Southern California. This section of the live stream shows the actual live data from my Raspberry Shake. It's all the same data, just presented in four different ways. The last eight hours graph shows any quakes detected over the last eight hours. The black and blue lines graphs at the bottom show the last two minutes of activity from the Raspberry Shake. Originally, I started with just the black line at the bottom, which is a fixed scale graph. And up to the point of Ridgecrest, all the quakes tended to fit into the scale. But what Ridgecrest highlighted was that for large quakes, it saturated that scale and you've got a bunch of black lines that, although impressive, um, you can tell the details if the quake was increasing, decreasing, and where the P and S waves were. So a little bit later, I added the blue line, the variable line graph. Now what this does is it, it, it shrinks down to the smallest signal and also expands to the greatest signal. So it really helps outline the, the quake as it comes through, especially in the cases where the black line is, has been saturated. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the two graphs working together. On the smaller quake, it barely moves the black line, but the blue line zooms in enough to see some of the detail that's not easily seen. My larger quake quickly fills the black fixed scale, but the blue line expands to show the detail where you can see the variation that's not so easily seen in the fixed scale graph. And you can also pick up here as you see the, the S wave of the larger um, quake come in. And also the benefit of having the fixed scale, you can obviously see here that the two uh, quakes, the arriving energy here in Chino Hills is, is greatly different. So again, with a variable scale, you can pick up all the details, no matter how large and small. And the fixed scale gives you a great um, way to compare the strength of quake by quake as it arrives here. The last set of graphs in the live data graphs, also containing two minutes of data, is the spectrogram. The spectrogram is just a different way of looking at the, the data that's contained in the black and blue 
line graphs that shows the frequencies contained in the waveforms and how strong they are relative to each other. The spectrogram is a great tool to help verify if what you're seeing in the waveforms is a quake or not. Over time, I found I use it quite a bit. And I'll point out what to look for as we look at some sample quakes later on in the video. There is one more feature of the live stream, and it's a not visible one, and it's the audible alarm. For those that have been around here for a while, you are very familiar with the, uh, the triple beep. I often get the question, well, what magnitude is the alarm set at? And the answer is there is no magnitude it's set at. Uh, basically, the alarm looks at the signal for the past 20 seconds and compares it to the last one and a half seconds. If that signal jumps enough over a certain level, then the alarm goes off. So not all quakes set off the alarm. They can be too small to stand out from the current background noise to trigger the alarm. And most alarms are quakes. There is a small percentage of false alarms, and those are typically done by trash trucks on trash day. And since the alarm is somewhat dependent on the current background noise, the alarm tends to be more sensitive and will pick up smaller quakes in the quiet overnight hours from like 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. Now that you've seen the components of the live stream, I'd like to show you three quakes to show you how it all works together. We'll start off with a local quake here, only seven miles away. And the alert tone will go off shortly. It looks a little larger because it is close, and you'll notice that the triangles nearby my station do not change much color since it's relatively small. And you'll notice the nice sail signature in the spectrogram. As the 2.9 gets ready to roll in here, a couple things to notice. Watch the triangles around my station turn red and as the waves propagate outwards from nearby and how much redder the sail signature in the spectrogram is. And also the alarm will ring higher and longer because of the stronger motion initially detected. This quake is about 100 miles further from Chino Hills than the first quake. Some things to notice is that the triangles in Southern California, most of them will turn red and orange as the quake moves from north to south as we listen to the alarm being triggered. Also notice the spectrogram signature, not nearly as tall and as crisp as the first quake. And I guess the best way to think of it is like being at a concert. If you're up close to the stage, you get the full range of frequencies. But as you walk further and further away, you just hear the, the, lo the low frequencies. And it's, it works in a similar way with quakes. Um, as the quake gets further and further away from where you are, um, you're just left with the, the lower frequencies. You can also notice the distance between the, the P and the S waves. The S waves are always slower than the P waves. So the farther the quake is, the more of a gap there is between the arrival of the P and S waves.
The last quake we're going to look at is all the way 300 miles from Chino Hills. Take a look at the similar things that we've done before. If you look at the station view map, the triangles will turn not so much red, but more yellow and orange as it moves its way from north to south. And also look at the spectrogram, as I pointed out earlier, at these distances uh, you'll get only the lower frequencies, so it ends up with more of a band of uh, orange at the bottom of the spectrogram and no clear sail signature. And the distance now between the P and the S waves is even greater because of the longer distance each wave has to have traveled. Now that you've seen what quakes look like on the stream, let's take a look at some things that are not quakes and what they look like. In this example, you'll start to see the uh, blue and black lines bulge a bit and start giving the impression that the quake is coming. But then if you look at the freeze frame of the camera, you'll see our culprit, a not too common uh, semi-truck, but it's causing the, the vibrations here. If you look at the spectrum, it's your biggest clue. Uh, you notice when we look at the real quakes, the color goes all the way down to the bottom of the spectrum. In this case, it doesn't. It looks more like a cloud or a mountain. So that's a way to always kind of cross-check that even though you see the blue and black lines, uh, there's some movement there. Look at the spectrum, and if the color doesn't go all the way to the bottom, and more likely it's not a quake. Sticking with vehicles since they are the largest source of noise here. Um, again, it's a, another like cloud-like pattern in the spectrogram, even though it did move the black and blue lines a little bit, but nothing down to the bottom. It looks like a cloud. So between the spectrogram and the camera, 
Uh, it's often a, a good way to cross-check to see if that movement in the blue and black lines is truly seismic or just some type of noise. Here we have in the spectrum uh, more or less some uh, vertical lines with no, no trail off and no color all the way to the bottom. Uh, this is usually an indication of some type of footsteps uh, near the seismograph. In general, any horizontal lines you see in the spectrogram are from some type of motor. Most common are air conditioning units and also swimming pool pump motors. And in this case, this is from a neighbor's swimming pool pump motor. Sometimes you'll see the bands of color in the spectrogram just above the bottom line with corresponding uh, diamonds or football shapes in the blue and black lines. These are usually seen um, with uh, heavy trucks in the area, typically trash trucks. So these are just some samples of some uh, non-seismic noises that may appear time to time. There's occasionally noises that I have no idea what it is. All I can say is it's, it's not seismic. Hopefully this video has been helpful in understanding the information being presented on live stream and how to best interpret it. I would recommend subscribing and clicking the notification bell so you'll be alerted when I post new videos. Special thanks to all those regular uh, stream viewers. I appreciate all the kind words and support over the past year. Thank you.